excited to introduce our speakers starting with Simone. What I would say, and I'm going to say it briefly because I know there's dinner plans and all of these sort of intersecting moments of life happening in this room and so many personal biographies that are converging here at this moment. And I almost felt tempted when I was looking through Lyle's book that actually we, we, we arranged some kind of photo shoot recreating scenes. <laughs> because many of I you love were, that. Yeah, I know, I kind of thought it would be a makeshift. Or maybe flying you over for my whole show. A, a, a sort of conceptual rejig of, of what the book, um, the reality the book speaks to, which I think is a particular moment that I didn't have the pleasure of living through, but through this book somehow it becomes a kind of portal, a point of reference, a way into understanding, you know, what Belle Hooks looks like when she gets out of the shower, or how Stuart Hall looks like, what Stuart Hall looks like when he isn't in a moment of pensive thought. Mm. And those insights for a person of my generation who experiences most of these people as most of us do by way of bibliography, by way of uh, important documentary forms like you know documentary images, most of which attest to those figures' importance within time and space as these kind of stoic figures to see them in moments of vulnerability where they're kind of stripped of all of that prestige and absolutely, essentially human on every level and that we're, we're not ultimately um, canonizing them, um, I think is, is a kind of very rare thing to find in any photographic practice. Um, and I think there are obviously figures in the book we could all talk about at length, but I guess what I just wanted to sort of impress on Lyle is the importance for, I guess, an emerging generation of photographers that me being, I guess, uh, the offspring of a curator like Simon. I say that because I guess I'm of a generation of curators who are indebted to people like Okwin Ways or Thelma Golden and Simon and Jemmy who sort of paved the way and many, many others with regards to critical practices around African American art or generally people of colour, those who are unrepresented and marginalised, particularly in the cultural moment of the 90s. And what, what I would say is it's interesting that it opens with this kind of um, allusion to the idea of a chorus because when I set about organising a show at this, uh, the Jude Pond, which was my task for last year, is to organise an exhibition programme around four distinct practices, we called our symposium a chorus. And through that um, symposium, we invited various speakers, uh, not only to kind of evoke the really important work that people like Christina Sharp have done of late, but people also like Fred, Fred Moden, and we're obviously so indebted to those figures. But I think, with that said, I was sort of thinking about um, one of the essays in which there are, there are these parallels being drawn between Lyle as a sort of figure in the canon of documentary practice, um, people like Walker Evans and Eugene Etche, who's been very central in my foundation of photography as the kind of, as the kind of let's say, godfather of a specific form of kind of documentary realism. And I was thinking that if you think about this work in relation to um, a documentary canon, it's, as an art historical project, so important to also recognize its slippages in and out of time and space, how it doesn't submit to, yeah, let's say a kind of um, an art historical norm of what we expect a photo book to be or a documentary practice to be. There's nothing honorific about the way people are presented. Um, and there's actually, as much as people may say, oh, it evokes a nostalgia because they remember that club or that exhibition or that conference, I think we have to remember that at some point, as sad as it may seem, that will no longer be the case. This book will be a testament to the lives that are encased within it. And I think it's somehow important that um, we just think about the importance of, for Lyle with his generosity, and I mean, Lyle and I met in the context of a conference celebrating Mirage, which was an exhibition that took place in the late 80s, early 90s, and the next day we went for a walk around London to well, the National we Gallery. Actually, we, yeah. went to the 20, we met yeah. at the 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary, oh. so <laughs> later And I was there in 98, but yeah. then we met um, in 2000, yeah, exactly. 20th anniversary. So it was sort of this moment where, you know, figures like Lyle are, are hard to come back actually, because London, like Paris, is sort of a point of intersection where you're kind of every now and then you get to meet an international figure, and that's increasingly been the case, but particularly African-American artists, it's only really been the last 10 years that we've seen those practices represented. So any of you with institutional heads or, or connections, <laughs> I suggest you give these kinds of artists, these critical artists, you know, opportunities and spaces within your institutions. That's a, a little propagandistic <laughs> plug at the end. But um, other than that, I have uh, nothing to add. I'm sure we'll return to certain questions, but you know, thanks so much for coming, and thanks well, for thank you. inviting me. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.